the UK Prime Minister. He has a get out of Brexit card. Yeah, but he doesn't want to play it. No. You see, uh, the Kremlin blackmailed an Irish lawmaker into working as an agent of influence using a honey trap. Yes, they trapped him with some lass. Yeah, it was, it was some sexy lass for which they took pictures of him in precarious positions and blackmailed him. Well, unfortunately for this a lawmaker, he's now, well, he's being disgraced. He will be once his name is known. Currently, he's, uh, he's under investigation. So, his name has not been revealed. No. All we know, he is a Irish lawmaker and politician. And... He got caught in this honey trap. Now, it sounds a bit like uh, Nigel Farage when he gets caught in this, well, not to say honey trap, I don't know if anybody would actually go that far, but anyway, he got tricked by a man who said he got kicked in the head by a horse. Nigel Farage also got tricked. Well, while reading out one of his little, uh, you know, where you can do these little things he pays 70 quid for and that, and he'll, you know, say whatever you write on the card, so to speak, such as up the ra, a derogatory term for those in Ireland. Well, you see, this particular Irish politician, lawmaker, he... He didn't want to be, had to put it, uh, exposed. Maybe he's married, maybe he's got kids, he's worried about his family. I kind of get that. But to be fair, what would I prefer? Um, uh, being disgraced as a spy and end up again locked away? Or uh, a few uh, saucy pictures? Yeah, in precarious positions that get uh, published exposed or sent to the missus. Depends on the missus, obviously, but, you know, I think in most cases I'd rather not be in jail as a, uh, well, a Russian sympathiser and spy. But he wasn't a Russian sympathiser. No. And what happened? Yeah, the old light button. No, he wasn't, let's say, a sympathiser. He was entrapped. It was entrapment. That it was. He was worried about his reputation and just dug himself a deeper hole. You see, this man, he was used by uh, the Kremlin, and one geezer in particular, Sergio, or Craig, how do you pronounce this name? Paul uh, Poko Biev, or Piev? Poko Biev? Oh, anyway, some Russian geezer who is a part of the GRU, so it's like the Russian Security Services, basically a spy. And this guy was working um, within the embassy, and he's one of those who was expelled um, between 2019 and 2022 because of the you know Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Loads of um, potentially or potential spies were expelled from Ireland and and uh, yeah and the rest and um and the UK etc. and you know the EU and sanctioned. Now this was all happening, okay. Uh, during the um, rather fractious, the um, contentious negotiations between the United Kingdom and the EU. While this guy was being used to cause uh, unrest between Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, England and the EU. Russian interference. He was also talking to, or trying to influence, the paramilitaries. Just causing aggravation. I won't be surprised if there's something there regarding the DUP. I won't be a bit surprised, although that's just, you know, hearsay at the moment. But either way, they were trying to drive a wedge between Dublin, London and Brussels. Well. Now, although... He didn't expose any classified information, so he isn't going to be tried for uh, espionage, no. But he could still end up in jail over this. So, my point is, we know that Dominic Reeve was involved with the Russia report post-Brexit. 
was there Russian interference regarding influence of the British people during Brexit? And we know that's, that's the case, but Brexiters don't want to believe that, do they? They just want to, just want to, you know, be in their little Brexit bubble. Yeah, it will be wonderful if we did Brexit pro properly. <sighs> what, was it, what was she saying now? Oh, crikey. And with and Waddlebottom. It's not that Brexit is a failure. It's how we've implemented Brexit is a failure, didn't she say? Well, whatever way you look at Brexit, it was always going to be a failure. You can't not, you know, cut yourself off from your closest trading partners and expect everything is going to be smooth. It was never going to be smooth, and it isn't smooth. And you know, obviously, industry is complaining about all the red tape and you know uh, rules of origin, etc. Everything is much harder now, more expensive, putting the prices up for well, UK citizens, and also those in the EU who who are buying from the UK. Everything's gone up for them as well. But we have options here in the EU. We can go to other countries. We don't have to buy from the UK. The UK's got no choice. What else are they supposed to do? Buy from the EU, China, and places like that. Everything's imported, pretty much. We don't make much in the UK anymore. Not like we used to, anyway. So, this Russia report should really be reinvestigated. Now, I see this as a get-out-of-Brexit card for the current government, led by Keir Starmer. So why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they actually using this as a way to undermine the whole idea, the whole concept of Brexit. Oh, well, we said make Brexit work, but we didn't know about this, you know? Oh, crikey, it was... It was <laughs> the people were, were duped, they were, by Russians. Oh, that won't do. But no. They've said diddly squat. Now, crikey, there was... Was it back in uh, 2020... The Russia report, it revealed that the UK government failed to investigate Kremlin interference. But it was all in the actual Russia report. But the UK government did nothing. In fact, must, anything of any substance was redacted in the Russia report. All it shows is the fact that the UK government didn't really investigate. Now, the politicians at the time... The Conservative politicians who wanted their Brexit. Just want my Brexit, they would say. They, uh, well, they used the argument in their heads. Well, if we hadn't seen it, we don't know about it. And that was their argument. They would say things like, uh, well, we haven't seen evidence of any Russian interference. Well, you wouldn't have seen it if you haven't read it. You wouldn't have seen it if you had it redacted. Yeah, the British people, they suck it up. They take it in as though it's true. Been supported by the right-wing media. What do you expect, I suppose? Now, something needs to be done about that. The fact that we've got media in the United Kingdom that is owned and run, well, oh boy, the foreigners. The foreigners, the pesky foreigners that the Brexiters wanted to get out of the country. The Murdochs of this world. News Corp. Who pretty much owns 90% of the world's media. Setting their own narratives and influencing governments to suit. The only one they haven't been able to influence is the EU. Hence they're always attacking it. Just like Elon Musk. is not happy about, you know, about uh, sanctions and levies and what have you put against his companies in the EU. So he tax them. Same with Donald Trump. So he tax them. It's not surprising, is it? No. So my, my feeling is, really, if we're going to have any democracy in the United Kingdom, we really need to make sure it's, uh, the sources of information are clean. They're true. And they're honest. And we're not allow, we don't allow... And if we set down in law, we don't allow foreign interference in debate and elections and referendums such as the Brexit referendum. Anyway, what do you reckon? Should we 
reinvestigate the Russia report, unredact the redactions. Should we look more into what's going on in Ireland regarding this Irish politician who was honey trapped? Do you know what? I never get honey trapped, no. Don't know why. Anyway, why have these people like button <laughs> subscribe to the channel? But also, uh, if you want to support the channel, you can on Patreon or buy us coffee and links are down below. But also doing a rewilding here in France, we're applying a thousand trees on two hectares of land. And there probably will be more trees than that, to be fair. We've already done about 550-ish. Now, for every tree that we plant, for those who have donated to the project, um, I'm putting a sign with your tree, uh, but also it could be for a memory of loved ones and what have you as well, or pets, or it could be a gift for Christmas, you know. So you haven't got to send things to, oh mate, maybe the EU or what have you, from the UK, and the recipients having to pay uh, import duties. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, like I say, please beep the like button. Toodaloo.